everyone, it's Carrie. So most of you are likely familiar with the characters Count Chocula, Frankenberry, and Boo Berry. You may have seen them in the cereal aisle, or you could have come across them in a variety of commercials, toys, or artwork over the years. Whether it's bright colors and silliness, the fact that they are monsters, or just the nostalgia, these little guys have become a beloved part of our pop culture. I have always loved the artwork around the monster storyline. I've been wanting to make them in doll form for quite some time. It started back when I made a Marge Simpson doll a few years ago. I really enjoy making dolls from cartoons and other out-of-the-box characters. I tried making this set once before when I made my pink Rococo Bride of Frankenstein. She was going to be Frankenberry, but I chickened out. I just didn't have the vision at the time, so this time I decided to push through and get them all done, and I'm really happy I did. And if you follow me for a while, you know I love making Rococo Marie Antoinette style dolls, so I decided to make these in that look. So in today's video, I'll be sharing many parts of the process in all three dolls. I hope you enjoy it. So starting out, I'm working on a Cerise hood from Ever After High. I'm making her into the Count Chocula doll. So I cut her hair down really short and then scraped it with a screwdriver and then pulled it out with the hemostat. And then I'm removing the factory paint with the acetone, 100% pure acetone. And because I'm doing dark hair on her, I'm painting the head scalp a little bit better. I made sure to give her her widow's peak for the Count Chocula character. I'm using a Kiyomi Honorly Monster High doll for the Boo Berry, and this is a Dracubeca from the Monster High line Freaky Fusion, where they took two of the doll characters and kind of blended them together. So she's uh, Draculara mixed with Rebecca Steam. It's one of my favorite Monster High lines, by the way. So I'm trying not to bore you guys too much with the prep process, so let me know if you really want to see more of that. So I made them some shorts for underneath their little corsets and uh, puffy skirts and some tights. And now I'm just moving on to Count Chocula's big collar, making it sort of oversized and exaggerated. I'm using some thermal adhesive for this, mainly because I wanted to give it that stiffness, and but also because I really need to level up my stitching skills. This type of fabric is, is very, um, it's like that shiny polyester, the satin sort of polyester. And when I use it on the sewing machine, it sort of gathers, and I wanted this to be nice and, and stiff and, and sh keep its shape. And I know there's ways to do that on the sewing machine, which is why I need to level up my sewing skills. <laughs> so it's the new year, great time to start that. But I really like this thermal adhesive. It gives you a lot of options, and it also makes the fabric a little stiff anyway, so it worked perfectly for the collar. I'm just working on the hem by ironing it down around the edges. You will kind of ruin your ironing or ironing machine, your iron, <laughs> by um, using this stuff. So I I have one specif specifically for these types of tasks because it gets all over it. So once I ironed down the hems all the way around, I was able to just fold it in half and iron it to stay, stick it together. the lighter there just to melt some of the stray edges one thing that you can do that's uh, for fabric that isn't natural materials it's able to melt it a little bit just kind of evening up the edges I want to give it a little bit of texture anyway so I melt it around the edges there just to kind of even it up I'm using sort of the same technique for the uh, cape and I just folded it over some ribbon so that I could easily tie it around its neck. And then I stitched the collar to the cape. Just gathered it up a little bit to see how it would fit around the neck. So now moving on to the skirt, I'm making sort of bustles for, uh, to gather up around her waist. I made her jacket and shorts out of some vinyl. 
but to add the skirt on I'm just using some ribbon and a, adding a snap So that way I can just gather up the skirt pieces and attach it to the ribbon. And then I added some tulle underneath and some lace around the edges. Then I'm going to move over to Frankenberry. Just starting out with the glasses. I think these are Ever After High glasses and I'm modifying them. I'm using a heat tool there just to take out the center. And I carved it down and sanded it and then I primed it and then you'll see me uh, work on this I think a little bit later. I After I primed it I painted them up. I'm using the same satin sort of fabric for Frankenberry's costume, I'm using some patterns. If you're a supporter over on Patreon, the, some of these patterns should be in the list of patterns that are in the old archive. Um, I, I will get some updated patterns for the new archive though, or the new library. I'm using that same thermal adhesive for all the little tiny hems. They work good uh, specifically with this type of fabric because, like I said, I, I struggle with, uh, with stitching this type of fabric and it not gathering up real weird. So just a simple top and then adding the skirt. And one of my favorite parts of Frankenberry is the chain suspenders, so I wanted to make sure to do that for this dress. And I gave her some striped tights. And some of these pieces for Monster High just worked perfectly for these characters. I was super thrilled with this pair of, I think it was Frankie Stein shoes, and I just painted those up and added a little bit of silver wax to the chains in the back just to pull out some of the details and then sealed them up. I added some pearlescent sealant to all of the shoes to match the satininess of the dresses. Later I actually took off the arms of the glasses to put it onto a stick because I just didn't like how they sat on her face and kind of covered up the work that I did on her face up. And now onto the face ups. So I'm working on Frankenberry and I wanted to give these characters the same kind of heaviness to their eyelids as you see in the comics or cartoons or on the cereal boxes. How the they have these kooky looks that their upper their eyelid is really heavy and it also gave me an opportunity to do some eyeshadow work so I really enjoyed making these kooky looking eyes. I wanted to keep them you know sort of pretty and looking like the Rococo style but also reflective of the character the characteristics in the, the these characters faces. So just over exaggerating the eye, making it bigger than usual, but also like half closed. So since the eyes are the main feature of these face ups, my approach is a little bit different than the usual. I usually spend a little bit more time on the overall face than I do the eyes and here I'm kind of spending more time getting the shading around the eyes in a certain way. I'm working on making the eyelid or the crease of the eyelid be real deep back and then dark and then pulling out the highlights area, the highlighted areas so that it looks like there's a lot of um, roundness to the eyelid as well as it being quite large.
since I'm working on three dolls in this particular video, I'm just going to show you parts of each one of the face-ups. This one I'm working on is Kiyomi Honorly for Boo Berry. And I'm doing sort of the same concept where I'm making a heavy eyelid and a, you know, half-closed big eye. As I'm working, I'm using the, uh, the cartoon characters as reference, just to give me some inspiration, but also to just try to capture the essence of each face. A lot of the reference photos of Blueberry had him looking to the sides, so I thought a side glance would work perfectly for this version of my Rococo Blueberry. So same with the eyebrows, uh, I'm trying to capture the look of the cartoon characters and the shape and the size and the, the angle of the way that you often see them in the cartoon characters. Her hair is white, but the white eyebrows didn't stand out enough for me, so I'm making them blue. I also gave her a little bit of a smirk where one side of her mouth is turned up just a tad. And giving her extra highlight dots. For the tiny ones I'm using toothpicks and a dotting tool for the bigger ones. Here's a little look at some of their hairstyles putting on her hat. I wanted Booberry to look extra fluffy, so I gave her a bolo jacket with puffy arms. Just a reminder of my new printables on Etsy, I have an instant download of my step-by-step -step guide to doll repainting. It includes lots of good information and is especially helpful for those who like to have something printed out next to them while they're working, and it's only $5. Also for those who would like to get started on selling your work and or may just need a little bit of help coming up with the pricing, I have an instant download of a calculator template and tutorial on pricing dolls and other original one-of-a-kind artwork. Pricing one-of-a-kind artwork can be different than pricing other types of art and in this guide it walks you through the ins and outs of that along with a calculator template to come up with the right price customized just for you. So the links to those are in the description box below, they're in my Etsy shop. I also have classes over on Skillshare and tips and twice a month tutorials on my Patreon and the links to those are also below. I had so much fun making these dolls. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know which one's your favorite. Also, let me know in the comments if you have any ideas for any other comic characters you'd like me to create into doll form. I'd love to see your ideas. And one of my goals for this year is to try to work on some dolls that are requested in the comments of my videos here on YouTube or TikTok or Instagram. So let me know what you guys think. I'm a Gen Xer, so when I'm not making Rococo dolls or fairies, I tend to make characters that are from my childhood. But I'd love to try something different, and I also want to hear what those who watch my videos are interested in. So if you like this video, I'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you soon. Bye!